morning. Let's put this off to the side. Okay. Today I thought I'd give you a few helpful hints about lighting. And lighting is something that can be very tricky. It's something that with the right light you could do anything and it looks fantastic. This particular scene called the Temple of Zion. <coughs> Excuse my heavy breathing. It's not because I'm excited. It's just a little winded right now. Okay, so this is the way this scene's supposed to look. This scene, if I was to just look at it with the lights, which I've put the lights on right here, the main lights, tunnel lights, things like that, and we were to look at it in eye ray, let's look at it. And for some reason, these lights just don't look good when it comes to just its standard settings. Give it a second. One thing too about rendering um, and seeing previews in your screen, always push them down in quality. So I did that. So let's see what uh, this scene looks like. As you can see, it's pretty black. This is real, real. I want it to look like that picture we just got done seeing. If you go in your render settings, and you go in your mapping, the photography, you know something about some of these things. Shutter speed, your edge stop, and your thermal. So, let me explain these three things real simply to you. You increase your shutter speed, you restrict your light. Open it up. The number, less light. Lower the number, more light. Look like shutter speed. Your film speed, higher the number, more light. So let's just do a little bit here. Let's put F stop. And really put it at half stop. Eight. Our scene now is lit. And all I did was change the F stop on it. Now these particular settings, shutter speed, f-stop, and ISO, in the old days we called that ASA, uh, this allows you to affect the overall scene. Now if I were to render the scene just the way it is, I'd be happy with it. It actually looks pretty good. Let's see. Let's eight. And let's increase our film speed. Remember, the higher the film speed, the more sensitive it is to lighting. So let's put it at 1,000 from 100. Not as dramatic, but we start to see the image. It's nice to do film speed in, to sort of tweak it a little bit. Your f stop's really going to be the one that dramatically change it. Now let's look at shutter speed. Let's change that 120 to 60. Not a whole lot. If we made it a one, <laughs> a one second sh shutter speed, we were able to see it. Again, you could see by changing the camera set, you know, adjustments. Let's put that back at a half a stop. You can affect the entire scene. It's pretty simple. So, let's... Uh, Let's make this scene go away, and I'm going to show you another scene. So that's how you adjust manually all those things. Now we need something for HDRIs. And as it takes a while, this is pretty big scene. And there it goes. Patience, patience, patience. Now 
Now, the, um, what we're going to see next is I'm going to just put a couple characters in there. And we're going to see uh, how we can manipulate lighting with rotation in our, of our dome. And uh, that is going to be another little trick that I use all the time. Now, I always use my camera settings. Always. Because there's always a little bit of tweaking that I want to do to the overall environment. Alright. Finally cleared. Alright. Let's put something in here. Okie dokie, okie dokie, come on. My computer's not as new and as fast paced as all these other new ones, but uh, nonetheless, well, it does a pretty good job. Let's put that over here. Come on, come on. I do use GIMP for my post production. Um, it, this is a open source, open source software, so you can go to um, GIMP.org and you can find GIMP for your photo needs. All right, let's go to let's get a um, let's get uh, an environment. Uh, we'll do big ocean, and then we'll put a boat in it. And then we'll see what we can do to uh, manipulate that scene in lighting. All right, let's let's put that, and then we're just that's our surface, and then we're going to put a boat in there. Ooh, you know what? One of my favorite boats. HMS Victory. It's one of my favorites. Big tall ships. Tall ships are cool. All right. All right, there's our big giant tall ship. So, let's get close, up close and personal to it. All right, so just for looking at lighting. Now, one thing about Big Ocean, which is a fantastic uh, um, surf water model. Let's go over to Big Ocean and look at render settings. Now render settings, these are the same ones that are in our render settings over here. So they've chosen these in order to um, set off the water just right. So you got sunset, daylight, things like that. So let's uh, just pick one and we are going to again make sure that our quality is well down so and let's see what it looks like now we're rendering in a low quality of course because I want I just want to see the lighting and whatnot. So let's see what that does. Okay, good. Now, 
you can see where the ship is on the water, and you can see where the light's coming from. The light is coming left to right. Go over to editor, our render settings. Move it to degrees. Let's see what happens. Now this is interesting. Look at the lens flare that we're getting to the right. Feels a little bit more. Um, degrees. See what happens. Now it's over to our shoulder here. So it's way it's over here. So you would expect 180 degrees from that area. You want the shadows. You want those shadows to come casting here and here onto um, whatever subject that you want. The texture shaded. And I'm going to knock my HMS Victory down to size. So let's uh, move this down to about 25%. Changing its size affects the overall scale, of course, but I'm not going to see that stitching anymore. Watch. Here we go. And our eye ray. Oh, see, it's all gone. It's pretty, pretty gone. So that's what we want. And again, we still we get a side light. And you, and you play with the dome a little bit. So, just play with the dome until you get the lighting that you want. Now, usually, I will turn, after I get the lighting what I want, I will turn it off. Now, this is all going to be transparent back here. And what I can do in GIMP is put a background on. I use a That's GRI. These are over in presets. And you'll see, let's say we want a, sort of a moonlit night. I've got some nice moonlit night. not alphabetical. There they come. The moon lips. So. Uh, dawn sky 3. Let's see what that looks like. Again. Beautiful though. Look what's happening. Get the um, we get the uh, I mean, it really does look very, very good. Maybe tilt that ship a little bit. And uh, make it look like you know, that's a little too much. Wrong axis. I use controls a lot. Alright. Tilt the ship just a little bit. Just a little bit of a tilt. 
and uh, so you can just go ahead and put uh, moonlight. And I again, I eliminate the background for transparency. I can create this sky separately. I can create moons separately and stars and things like that. And what I can do in between the foreground and the background is and it creates a much There's life to it. That's the section of it. sky looks like. Night sky. Okay, it's coming, 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 coming. You can see a dark ocean. Too dark. <laughs> what? What did we learn? Well, let's go over to Ed. Our exposure settings. Put that I'm going to create I got a camera I'm going to uh, go to my perspective and it was already on the ship what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put point lights on here so here's a point light here perspective view and this is going to look like there's like lanterns on the ship another point light windows light up a little bit. We're in the captain's quarters now and we're going to put one there. Let's go to camera. Now I've got four point lights. I will now go into choose one. I want them to be very warm tones so go to photometrics under lights and choose your Kelvin down to about 3,500, 3, 3,000 right in there. And I'm going to turn, add a couple zeros to that. And same thing, we do that there. And move that down to about 35, you know, in that 3,000 range. Alright, and point light. 
the last but not least. All right, now we got four point lights on this nighttime scene of the ship. Let's see what it looks like in the moonlight. Take a little longer because now I've added more illumination to it. So we'll look at the eye ray preview. should have some illumination. Now I made it kind of high, so let's see what it looks like. In lumens. Yeah, too high. So, Knock a zero off of each one. All right, now let's see. Let's see what I got. Right. Look like there's life on this ship. Use the slide rule in order to see if you can adjust it. thousand at fifteen thousand well, there's an assumption there are men on board there's lights the lights a little more oh, there yeah, there you go it's like a sort of dark play with my uh, eight, eighth of a stop Scenes are kind of tough, you know. To really want to put something in the background, do I want to keep that? Play with my lights a little bit. All right, you know I like that. So, what have you learned? You go to tone mapping and choose f-stop, ISO, and shutter speed. These things, these three things, will give you more control than you've ever thought of. Your white point, so I'm going to do cover. If I want to see to be more warm, choose blue. So the warmer color you choose, the bluer the scene will be.
and get code mapping and render settings, it's going to be your best thing. As for and, uh, HDRIs, utilize them. Turn them off. Make a separate rendering of the same scene, but just the background. If you do that, you will uh, be able to create layers between your foreground and background and create a much better looking picture uh, on it. So, you know, I hope you learned something. If not, uh, I don't know. But uh, the software I'm using is Data Studio. It's going to go to data3d.com. It's free. And uh, you can download it there. And uh, have fun with it.